are we ready? Ready for what? Oh, well, ready for some tasty grub, innit? Oh, mate, I'm so hungry. It's been such a day here. I'm so ready for some Mexican food. Oh, man, Mexican food is the one, and this is the king. Shall oh, we? Oh, yes, let's do this. Oh, hello, everybody, and welcome. It must be that time. It must be that time of day. It is 6 p.m. What does that mean, Ian? It means it's Bosch o'clock, baby, woo -hoo! Oh yes, so hello to all of you on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Hope you've had a really, really wicked Wednesday. Maybe it's just starting if you're in America, like a lot of you are. Or maybe, like us in the UK, you've had a full day of it and it's been super hot. Yeah, has been, it been hot? It has been a warm one, but you know what? What would you prefer, warm or cold? Oh man, always hot. Yeah, hot is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's been an absolute scorcher and the weather's been hot so that means it's kind of Mexican food is the perfect thing for us to be doing. So we're making Mexican food, it's our Mexican week here on Bosch Live and today we've got a right treat for you. And we've got a right treat for you on Facebook who are here with us and on YouTube who are also here with us and for Kat who's here with me in my ear. So if you've got any comments or any questions let me know. So does that mean we're good on all, we all channels? We are live though. Boomer. So today's recipe is an extra special one. I would say this is probably my second favorite of the week. This is basically a Mexican toasty, right? It's the quesadilla, the quick quesadilla from this cookbook right here. So this is our Bish Bash Bosch cookbook. If we go up to Top Cam, boom, look at that. Doesn't that look good? It looks very good indeed. This is what we're making. This is our quick quesadilla. We should also have it on camera three. Boom! So that is an absolutely delicious tortilla. And inside that tortilla, we've essentially wrapped up a mix of tomatoes, cheese, we've got the guacamole flavor in there with the coriander and the avocado. Loads of delicious ingredients, loads of freshness. We're essentially eating the rainbow right here with this dish. So if you're cooking with us, you're gonna love it. But even if not, just watch and kind of imagine because it's gonna be really tasty. It's going to be so tasty. And if you're cooking along with us, well done. You've made a great decision. Your tea tonight <laughs> is going to be extremely delicious. Absolutely. You're going to love it. First things first, as we've learned by doing these lives with all of you, that it's helpful to run through the ingredients first. We are going to do a quick whiz through of what you need to prep to cook with us. So without further ado, look at that. There are our ingredients. So if you are going to be cooking this, what you want to have with you is you want to have a red onion which you have sliced relatively finely. A garlic clove, which is grated, or you can do as I'm gonna do and um, just crush it straight in. Two large roasted red peppers from a jar, but actually if you haven't got them in a jar, just two red peppers will be fine. Slice them uh, finely. Next up, we have 100 grams of dairy-free cheese. We've gone for applewoods because it's super melty. A large avocado, which is sliced up into kind of bite-sized pieces. 30 grams of fresh coriander. We actually picked the leaves apart from ours to make it look extra nice, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. One lime, 400 grams of black beans or kidney beans or really any beans you like. Some olive oil, of course, because we're gonna be frying, but not too much because we wanna be kind of healthy. 400 grams of chopped tomatoes, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, maybe a little bit more if you're that kind of crazy person. We are gonna use 100 grams of tin sweet corn, four large flour tortillas, or you could use corn if you can find big corn ones, but um, we could only get flour ones here in the UK. And then finally, a little bit of salt and pepper to season, as always. Sounds good, right? Sounds absolutely wonderful. And uh, yeah, man, I mean like a quesadilla, is it, is, it, is it basically an Italian cheese toasty? I mean, oh, a Mexican cheese toasty. <laughs> Italian, yeah. that was last week. <laughs> That's true. You're, you're going back in time. <laughs> so, right, so I was taught to speak Spanish by my parents, right? So I can, I can do a little bit of Spanish. I would say, puedo hablar un poco de español, pero no voy a hacerlo ahora. But queso means cheese. Ooh. So I remember, was it, I can't remember whether it was on our TV show, mm -hmm. on the shoot for our TV show, when I was like, Quesadilla, it must like be related to queso, which means cheese. Mm. And I remember saying that to someone and someone was like, oh no, well, sometimes you can have quesadillas with no cheese in it. Like I was right daft. And yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was like <laughs> cheese related, but never mind. But apparently it is. Well, that, so it, it does you know, evolve from cheese. 
But, well, it kind of does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's basically like a kind of little cheesy, mm. but it doesn't always have cheese in it. So it's almost like a toasty, if the word for toasty was cheesy, mm -hmm. but you could have a non-cheesy cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> if we haven't had any, like, Spanish people in the audience, first and foremost, hello, or... Hola. Hola. <laughs> I see what you did uh, there. Um, uh, yeah, just let us know what you think about Casey Days in the comments below and Kat will relay that information to us and we can have a nice discussion about it. Yeah, we'd love to hear that. Uh, like etymology, language is always a really exciting thing. But regardless of where it came from, this is a delicious dish. And without further ado, we're going to get into it because there are a fair few steps to take. First up, we have a pan here. How's our pan looking? Doesn't that look good? The cameras are on fleek today. Oh, flicky, flicky. Add a little bit of ha uh, heat under our pan and then let's add some oil. A little bit of light olive oil to lubricate that pan. Don't use extra virgin here. Just use a light olive oil because that's going to taste better and perform better under heat. And then to that pan, we will add one red onion, which has been sliced. And the reason we slice it here is because we want that little bit of extra bite we want a little bit of personality to Mr. Onion here. We want him to be friendly and kind of, you know, he's going to soften, but he's going to remain almost a little bit stringy. Mm -hmm. Stir that around. And of course, we've got a saying here on Bosch, which relates to onions, which if you can use red onions, do. And if you can salt them, absolutely do. Yeah, it's all about that seasoning from the ground up. So we're seasoning there. We're getting that salt into the onions. And that salt is also going to help to draw any extra moisture out of those onions. These are going to saute for about five minutes. But because we're live, we're going to fast forward through that little bit. And we've got some that we pre-sauteed over here. Oh, it reminds me of Blue Peter, it does. Blue Peter, when I were a lad, that were the best show on the telly. And uh, guys, happy Wednesday. We've made it to the third day of the week, which means there's two days left. And if you aren't cooking along with us, but you are watching along with us and you want to cook along either tomorrow or Friday, all of the ingredients that you need for the next two dishes that we intend to cook with you are on our website, bosch.tv. Go check it out. Okay, these onions are looking good. Look, you can see the flavor has developed just a little bit. They've softened, they're almost a little bit translucent. So if you're cooking along at home, that is where you want to get to. It should take about four or five minutes. Just make sure you keep stirring to make sure those onions don't stick. Exciting. Very exciting. Are you indeed. ready? Yeah, man. Okay, so the next part of this recipe calls for grated garlic. But I like to cut corners in the kitchen. And rather than grate it, which does give a nice surface area, I'm going to use this thing right here. So that is a, um, a garlic crusher. Now you could peel that, but I kind of think, what's the point? This thing was kind of invented so that you don't have to peel garlic. So if you just pop that garlic in there, it's just gonna find its way out. It will find its way through that uh, skin with all that pressure you're applying. And then you use a knife, just get rid of any bits, and there we have our garlic. Wasn't that quick, Ian? Wasn't that easy? That was very, very easy. I mean, I'm, to be honest, I'm not a, um, a garlic crusher fan, but that, that, what you've just done there, has maybe um, me. <laughs> well, because you like to take your time yeah. and do all the prep carefully and methodically, which is a wicked thing to do, you know? When you've got the time to do it, you should do your mise en place and, and do things quick, uh, slowly and carefully. But this thing can save you so much time. Yeah, yeah it's very, very true. Obviously, and considering that we have a book called Speedy coming out, exactly. that is a great it's thing a to speedy have. hack. So if you have a little look inside here, on the top cam maybe, yeah, yeah, there you go. You'll see we've got this gobbins left. Now there is a little bit of garlic that we've lost, you know, so it's not quite as efficient with the use of garlic. But I mean, that could even go in, but that is for the bin. Yeah. But you can see if you did like two or three in there, you'd have basically done the equivalent of peeling two or three garlics mm. in about 10 seconds. And saved yourself immense amounts of time. That's a very good hack. <laughs> there nice. you go, hacked it. So we will just let that garlic cook down for about a minute. We don't want to burn it. Be really careful not to burn your garlic because it tastes so horrible when you do that. Um, but give it about a minute to just make friends with the onion, warm up and realize that it's going to be eaten. And then because this is a speedy recipe, we're just going to add a load of extra things all in one go. Are you ready? I'm ready if you are, man. First up, our red pepper. And this red pepper could be roasted or you could just use a fresh red pepper as we have here. 
The roasted would be the kind that's in a jar. And what you would do with either of them is to just finely slice them and then add those bad boys to the pan. That's going to add a real nice sweetness to this whole dish. Oh man, peppers are so good, aren't they? Love peppers. In fact, there you go, Gary, that's for you. Oh, thank you, you very much. You can just munch on that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Next up, we're going to add some beans. Mexican food almost mandates using beans. Uh, you can use whatever beans you want for this part. I'm going to use some of these little black beans. Stir them through. Next up, we've got our chopped tomatoes. Oh, lovely. Carefully pour that in. Looking lovely on camera there. And some cayenne pepper. So this lovely little spice is going to add lots of heat and kind of punchiness to this dish, which really is what we want. So just stir that through and bring everything together. Man, it's looking very good, looking very Mexican and, and healthy, actually. Super healthy. Lots of health. It's kind of like eating the rainbow, right? Yeah, definitely. This I mean, is an eating the rainbow kind of situation. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, you've just got just a big pan full of really tasty, healthy vegetables. It can't... Nothing but goodness. Yeah. I feel like, you know, we did Italian week last week mm -hmm. and there was a lot of, there was a lot of carbohydrates Loads. in Italian week. So if you were cooking along, you, were, you will have seen lasagna, you will have seen the carbonara and it was very carb heavy. I feel like with Mexican food, especially vegan Mexican food, there's just lots of fresh vegetables, lots of colour. So much colour. But on the subject of Italian week, how good was that speedy lasagna? Oh man, such a good recipe, right? From the book Speedy Bosch, yeah. 30 minutes, full on lasagna. We've proper hacked that to bits. Mm. It's really, really clever. Guys, if you missed that, I would strongly recommend that you go and check it out on our YouTube channel because it is very good. Now this delightful thing is just gonna soften for about five minutes. So through the magic of television, or live Bosch, <laughs> I will switch it out for one that we already did. Which is a perfect time to take a question. Kat, have you got one? Can we recommend any films or documentaries for new vegans? Yes, we absolutely can. Now, the first one that I will say is a movie that was done by a man called Kip Anderson, and it's called Cowspiracy. You may or may have not have heard of it, but it's a very, very interesting movie. And it's actually probably the movie that Henry and I both accredit to turning vegan. So that's a really, really good one. There's another one called Forks Over Knives, which deals with the health um, aspects of veganism and why it's so good for you. And also the latest one that I would recommend is by um, a man called James Wilkes, who is a a uh, former UFC fighter and it's called The Game Changers and it is very, very good. Go check it out. Absolutely. What a wicked film. It kind of focuses on the, like, the athletes that are going plant-based and step by step dispels the myth that plant-based eaters don't get protein. Because look, even this is packed with protein. I mean, We've got beans. our legumes in here, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Perfect. So that that dish now is ready to go. It's only about five minutes on. So if you're cooking along at home, you'll just want to cook that mix down for about five more minutes. But that is now perfect. That looks real good. Which means we're kind of ready for the fun bit here. Ooh, fun bit. Are you ready for some yeah, fun? Yeah, man. Well, first off, before we get into the fun, <laughs> I forgot to put in the <laughs> sweet corn. So let's add the sweet corn. Pop that in there. So that's 100 grams. We use the sweet corn from a tin. Yeah. And just a touch of lime. The lime is a really nice thing here. This, this acidity is going to kind of bring this whole dish together. It's actually going to act to break down some of the food as well. And, and it kind of like, acid has this really great effect of almost bringing everything together. So it will lessen saltiness, it will lessen spiciness, it will lessen sweetness. It's a great thing for just rounding off a dish is adding a little bit of like lime acid, lemon acid, or even vinegar. And sweet corn, oh my goodness gracious. If you've got kids and you want to get them to eat more vegetables, just tell them they're like golden nuggets, right? A big pinch of pepper is going in there. And then of course, because we like to season at every stage, some salt, just stir that through and let's give that a taste. That does look real good. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's have a little tasty, tasty. Mmm. Wow. Tastes good to me. Tastes great to me, in fact. Absolutely delicious. So we don't need any more heat in there. Uh, that cayenne pepper has really done its job. Yeah. 
saltiness is good, pepper really comes through, and overall you've just got a delicious filling. We just want to add that cheese to get that proper quesadilla style. Do we have a little, um, yeah, little matty type on. thing? Now the next bit, I'll pop you on camera one. Yep. The next bit is going to be really fun. So we've made our filling. And a quesadilla, as we said before, is kind of like a, a Mexican toasty. So we're going to be building that in a pan and showing you how to do that, which is a quite cool little technique, really. It's a very cool technique. And the best thing I find about this dish is it's so quick. So it's like, if you just are, it's a Thursday, say, and it's like, it's raining and you've just got home and you're like, oh God, I could just do the takeaway, but I don't want to order a takeaway because it's not that healthy, but I want something quick. This could be the answer. We're definitely moving towards quick recipes at the moment, we aren't we? Are. <laughs> you see the wayward oil just flying yeah. through the air. <laughs> okay, so if we have a look down at the top cam, you will see that I've got a pan. Uh, really, any wide pan will do for this bit. You just want to make sure it's wide enough to hold your whole tortilla. Add a touch of oil. Now, what we're using here is a little kind of spreader, little pastry brush. Interesting fact about the pastry brush is that you want to make sure you get one that's vegan uh, because not all of them are. Mm. You can see this is kind of made from silicon, uh, but actually a lot of the ones that you'll find in a normal kitchen will be uh, made from hair of animals, so we don't go for them. Yeah, like horse hair or something. Right? Yeah, so spread that around. How are we doing? We're doing good. I'm you just... need to tweak your camera? Yeah, I just want to tweak Okay, so we're going to spread that out and just make sure that the oil is all the way around the outside of that pan. And this oil is just going to stop this flour tortilla from sticking. Boom. And then Mr. Tortilla is going into the pan. There he is. Just like that. There he is. Pop over some of our dairy-free cheese. So we're using Applewoods. This stuff we know melts well. So that's why we chose it. For you, you know, you might not be able to get this um, or you might not like the smokiness of it. The important thing is to just find a dairy-free cheese that you know is going to melt well, um, and that's what you want to be using. Now, we're not going to melt it. We're just going to let it soften in the pan, but this might be a perfect moment for a cheeky little question. Mm. Ah, well, um, Kat was actually just whispering in my ear. Apparently, we thank you very much for the comment. We have got some Mexican people in the, yes. uh, in the comments who say that this isn't exactly traditional and also sweet corn isn't ordinarily found in quesadillas. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. Uh, hola, ¿qué tal? Uh, and okay, cool. What would you recommend instead? I'm intrigued to know. Yeah, Kat, if you can ask those people uh, what they would recommend, that would be wonderful. But you know what? What we'd like to say is this is kind of our take, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's our homage, our nod of the head uh, to your delicious food. And you know what? We absolutely love Mexican food. That's why we're doing Mexican Week. Mm -hmm. If you've got any recommendations for things we should add in at a later date for another cook-along, do pop them in the comments below. Yeah, any... Any ideas, warmly received, drop them in the comments. Absolutely. How does that cheese come along, bro? And can, did, they, did they say anything about the uh, queso relation? Yeah, um, Mexican people who are in the... <laughs> if you could talk about the cheese, the queso stuff, that'd be unreal. Yeah, tell us whether or not queso and quesadilla are related. What is the relation between cheese and quesadilla? We would love to know that. Okay, into our pan, you can see that the cheese is starting to soften, which is perfect. I'm not gonna wait for it to melt completely because I don't want the base of this tortilla to go too dark. So then we're just gonna take our filling and pop that over half, not the whole thing, just over half of the base of the quesadilla. And this is just gonna make our life a little bit easier because it's gonna be quite hard to flip close with all of this gubbins all the way across it, but half filled is good. Spread that around just like that. Perfect. And that is looking great. Next up, what we'll add to the top of this is just some little cubes of avocado. They're just gonna go on top of here. That's gonna give us a kind of guacamole feel. Obviously, you wouldn't wanna cook the avocado, so it's just gonna warm through. That does look good. nice, man. And finally, some coriander. Absolutely crucial for me to get that kind of peppery flavor, that kind of Mexican freshness, the lime, the coriander, the avocado, giving you that guacamole style feel. Mm. Pop that over there. And then, moment of truth. Yeah. We'll check the doneness of the base of our tortilla. 
yep it's starting to warm and just flip it over like that fold it in half and now you can see where the cheese toasty reference comes in <laughs> by all means give this a little squish and just help it to close yeah. now all we're going to do at this stage is to just let everything warm up a little bit within this quesadilla it looks so cool. It's also, not only is it like a calzone or a cheese sandwich, it's kind of like a crepe, <laughs> isn't it? We used to have a joke in school about crepe. About, uh, well, was it? about when one needed a crepe. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, let's not go into that. Yeah. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I'm just gonna flip it. Oop, we had a little bit of loss there. Obviously you can see that is definitely done enough on that side. So we'll give it about another 30 seconds here and then we will get ready to chop this up. Oh wow, um, apparently uh, the question that you asked earlier on about yeah. queso cheese yeah. is, um, yeah, apparently it's hotly debated even in Mexico. Really? Yeah. Good, yeah. good. I'm glad if we can uh, spark a little debate because I don't know and you know, I'm, I'm intrigued to know. I feel like it must be related, you know, queso, quesadilla, yeah. it kind of makes sense, but then quesa would indicate feminine, who knows. Anyway, this is done. So I'm just gonna take that and pull that up and out into our next shot. Oh. If you're an avid viewer of these videos, you will know why we did that. That is just for the video that we'll make later on of this recipe. Yeah, man. So Kat, if you've got any questions as we relay and set, that would be really, really cool. Will we be continuing the lives after lockdown? Now that's actually a very good question. And um, we have been sort of musing over that over the, um, over the past couple of weeks, because obviously this has been an exceptional circumstance. It's, it's an exceptional circumstance for everybody involved. So um, yeah, we basically, when we heard about lockdown, we thought to ourselves we wanted to start providing people with real value in terms of education and also information. We thought the best way to do that would be to be doing it through live broadcast because obviously we're blessed enough to be living and working in the same place. So we had this wonderful opportunity as Bosch to kind of um, to, to cook loads of food and to use our live setup and, um, and to just go for it. But I think um, and, and the response that we've had has been very, very positive. Like, uh, we, it's made national press, been in a bunch of magazines, been on newspapers. We're doing um, a festival. Yeah, we're do, we're yeah. doing download festival. Uh, we're doing a live broadcast, well, pre-recorded live yeah, yeah. for download festival in a couple of weeks. So people have absolutely loved it and we've really enjoyed doing it, but it's, um, it's a lot of work and, um, and we, we're trying to think of good ways to sort of keep a little bit of live in our schedule but maybe not like a hundred percent live but yeah you let us know what you think about these live broadcasts in the comments below and you'd never know um, we may be swayed by your vote yeah that would be absolutely wicked to hear from you all uh, now that we've done nearly eight full weeks of lives eight. moving forward I think it's fair to say that five a week is maybe a little bit too much. Yes. But, but we might be able to do it, but we'd love to know your thoughts in the comments of what you would like to see. Yeah, so just fire them down there. But great question, whoever asked that. We really appreciate that. It's really nice. Um, I presume that you're asking because you've enjoyed them and we've enjoyed doing them, haven't we? Yes, we've absolutely loved it. Yeah. It's given us like a reason to get up in the morning. It's given us purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for hanging out with us and um, for spending this time and cooking together. And the good thing is we get to eat all of this food. Yes, we do. None of it goes to waste, not <laughs> no. a single piece. And, and the, you know, the best thing, uh, like, right, so basically it's like two sides to one coin was cake week, right? Because yes. cake week, we were like, oh God, we've got all this cake. But then we got to give it away, didn't we? Yeah, we gave the cakes, a lot of the cakes to the local health service, the NHS, as well as some to our neighbours. So we've curried good favour with those cakes. So if there's any NHS workers or key workers, big up yourselves, you've been keeping the country on point and we appreciate it more than you realise. Absolutely. So let's bring this quesadilla over to the chopping board. Be nice and central there. Yeah, that looks about right. So, ready? Yeah, ready when you are, baby. Here is that little beauty. Ooh, look, looking look. nice and brown with that kind of like leopard skin top right there. 
Now the key thing to realize is you probably want to make sure you've got a sharp knife for this because it would be easy to just kind of splodge this everywhere. So get a nice sharp knife and then we're just going to cut this into three. Perfect, look at that, straight through. Also into a little bit of chopping board there, but that's fine, that's what it's for. <laughs> and again, I'm just gonna kind of make sure that's gonna go. Oh, good chopping action. Slice that bad boy through. Here we have another little bit of quesadilla. There we have it, do you know what, I might, I'll tell you what, I'll leave that, that'll go a bit messy, so we'll have that after. <laughs> now here you can see we've got some salsa, but to just make it look a little bit nicer, I might just kind of toss a bit of coriander around the board. How are we looking on side cam? Yeah, good. Yeah, nice. Yeah. You know, just to, you know, make it look a bit arty, tell the story a little bit. Yeah, man, it looks cool. And then for me, it's time to eat. It's green rain, it's that, green rain. <laughs> that is an absolutely beautiful, quick little quesadilla. We did that in about 20 minutes in front of you guys. You can take that recipe. It is in Bish Bash Bosch if you want it, um, but we've just done it here with you for free. And now we should absolutely taste it. I wholeheartedly agree. This has been the best part of the whole evening. Taste time. Do subscribe if you're not already, because we're doing this every day. And um, yeah, like the page. Thank you for all of your comments. Let's taste it. Yeah, do you want to go? After you. Right, after me, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, right, okay, guys, you'll like this because it's kind of, um, right, just, just listen. You can hear that, right? Yeah. Good. So basically, because of the oil and the heat, it's kind of crisped up really beautifully. And um, yeah, it's, 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 I just know, I just know this is <laughs> going to be a really tasty morsel. Of course, you could dip it in a bit of salsa yeah, if you oh, wanted. Why the hell not? Eh? Now, this kind of tomato salsa is maybe a little bit rustic, yeah. but that's fine. Just a little bit extra tomato to tell the story right there. Mm -hmm. And it's a, cheers. It's, it's a famous cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. Oh my mm. goodness. Mm. Oh wow. That is genuine. Wow. Unreal. Oh, lovely. That is like the ultimate cheese toasty. Um, <laughs> the Mexican cheese yeah. toasty. Or is it just a toasty? Mm. We don't know. Hotly debated in Mexico, apparently. But regardless, it is kind of crunchy on the outside. Really, really nice and crispy, but then you've got all of that gorgeous moist flavour on the inside, and it's pretty fiery, right? It's quite fiery, and, yeah. um, but it's obviously really healthy, as we were saying before, it's like eating the rainbow. And um, do you know what? Now, neither Henry and I have kids, but I would say if you had kids and you cooked this with them, they would probably really enjoy the process and actually quite enjoy it because it looks a bit like a burger. Absolutely. Do we have any housemates? Oh, what? Oh, here he is. Let's see what Darren thinks. You better be quick, dude, else it's all gonna go. Big dizzy. Hurry on down. Oh my God, that is a delicious thing, mm. isn't yeah, it? Really, really, really good. Really good mm. one, wow. Body weight D, step in, have a taste. We didn't have them. How's it going? Ooh. So, this, if you didn't know, is a um, quesadilla. It's from Big... Look how messy this is. Shall, shall I cut it for you? you want, yeah, yeah, go, go on. Go Otherwise, on. it's just going to go all over you. Yeah. Here I mean, we go. Could make good uh, viewing, but... Mm. <laughs> it will, yeah. yeah. Won't be good for washing. Yeah. No. <laughs> or for your fingers. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. We've got a mini one there. Wicked. Right, I okay, found going in. Looks like a little slice of pizza, but with a top. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a double inverse Mexican pizza. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mike. Oh my. Um, yes, very good. Okay, cool. So, sorry, we've just got a, a microphone issue. Sorry, guys. Yours was folded over. Oh, Hopefully, folded that's over. better. Kat, Kat, Kat was whispering in my ear. She's like, oh, we've got a microphone issue, but it's okay. We're all right. Now. What do you think? That's yeah, delicious. I like it. It's got a bit of a, a spice to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the salsa. I mean, it looks amazing. It's uh, all so colorful and. Um, as I heard you saying, eating the rainbow. Yeah. That. Mm -hmm. that is, um, yeah, that is 
It's a win. De Spot delicious. on. Delicious. Loves delicious. it. Delicious. That's right. good to know. And what, what's your Instagram handle? Oh, at bodyweight underscore D. So yeah. if you're into any kind of bodyweight training, strength, mobility, I'm your guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, this is one of the guys that proves that you don't need meat to get protein. There you go. Yes. This is one of the dishes that proves that you don't need <laughs> meat to get flavour. Yes. And on that note, we should probably say adieu. It's adieu. Well, how do you say goodbye in Spanish? Hasta luego. 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 Hasta mañana. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time. Big love to all of you. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. See you later. Bye.